Okay, so uh, one of the things is, like if you go into the observer or into this periods of grace, uh, like I was asked a nice question on what if you meet dodgy people when you're in those. The thing of like going into an innocent place or an open-hearted place is that um, in the early days you have what I call is na naive, sp naive, naive love towards everyone. Um, and there's like, well, I see everyone's innocent, I see everyone's beautiful and everyone's pure. And uh, look, you want to borrow my credit card, here, here it is. <laughs> and, uh, you know, you can't pay your mortgage, you know, I'm sure you'll pay me back, here's all my money. So you sort of, sort of, you have this kind of love of everyone and you see Christ in everyone and you just think everyone is just absolutely wonderful. And you have overwhelming love and you see the beauty. Uh, intrinsic and, and the holiness of each individual. So that is actually, uh, and that ev everyone does when they go into these initial states for the first time, they do have that. And they get a rude, a rude awakening. Mm -hmm. um, because um, e the consciousness hasn't matured. Uh, Hawkins would call it the opening of the third eye of spiritual discernment hasn't yet happened at the same time. Mm -hmm. So you're just seeing the innocence of everyone but you've not yet uh, developed a spiritual maturity of spiritual discernment. So even with spiritual discernment, everyone is equally lovable and beautiful, but there is a, there is a deeper maturity to the, an intuitive capacity to not get pulled down, uh, because there is that discernment of uh, intuitive discernment that energetically you see the, the beauty and the div divineness in them, but you're not going to give them your wallet at the same time. Mm -hmm. You know, or you're not going to fall for like, you know, uh, you, you can trust me, hand over your money to me, and I'm going to fix your, your, your plumbing, whatever it is. So there is that, even though you, there is a, so, so if you survive it and don't go into deep anger and then renounce your spiritual pathway, then you, you, you have to, like, you, you, you gain spiritual maturity. So you're able to hold these divine states of grace, but also you're starting to develop spiritual discernment as well. So it's, uh, I think those are those old, old things in it, like, uh, uh, what was it, like, tie your camel. It's like something like, you know, like love the camel but tie it up or something. I forget what it was, yeah. the expressions, anyway. So, I really want to say, walk gently but carry a big stick. <laughs> walk gently but carry a big stick. So, <laughs> so yeah, whatever there, yeah, like that. So, for me, it's like, um, but energetically, as soon as I, it's not, you know, it's, it's an interesting question because you want to, like, you have to resolve the grievance and the judgment as quickly as possible because if you stay in that vibration, it's just going to get worse and worse. Mm -hmm. But, so you just have to, like, forgive them. But it doesn't mean that the maturity of the states of grace isn't more discerning and, and more I mean, intelligent is the wrong word, but it's like, you know, there, there, there comes, um, I've always found as you go up in levels of consciousness, it's like consciousness gives you unexpected tools which are not from your head mm -hmm. to deal with things. Like they'll often give you like spiritual buddies. Like I, I can't really see a good plumber from a bad plumber. But, I'll, you know, it's like suddenly I'm staying in these states of grace, but I'll meet like a good friend who's like 100% savvy on, te on telling bad plums. So I'll go, oh, you know, this plum looks so divinely beautiful and honest. But I'm, I intuitively know I'm going to check it out with John. John, what do you think? Do you think uh, Henry's a good plumber? Or should I hand him over my cash? And Henry goes, just looked at his website. I just looked at his reviews. Uh, and his jail record, and I think he's not a good guy, so, okay. So, you know, so it's like, almost like, as you stay in those states, grace eventually gives you mechanisms, yes. you know, or, or some, mm -hmm. you know, it's different for different things. I found, like, you know, I started to lose track of time, and I found, like, certain apps or certain things, or so, I've got, like, Alexa now. I can't remember things. I just say, Alexa, remind me I have to take the dustbin out tomorrow at 6 o'clock. <laughs> And then, you know, and I didn't, like, have to, like, hold that. I don't have to hold, like, God will give you ways of, like, staying in states of grace and not having to go into, into, into your head. Mm -hmm. And also for, like, con men as well. 
It's like you do realise she's going to get a notification. <laughs> I know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 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 I don't think she didn't light up. She didn't light up. <laughs> some, pe some people don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Never mind. Um, so, um, so yeah. So you have to spiritually resolve it, but you will. I mean, I, I've been warned by my teacher, Dr. Hawkins. There is a phase of spiritual naivety. Just because you see the innocence in everyone, doesn't mean you've got spiritual mm. discernment. Uh, with them, mm. so that's like a pre-warning to spiritual students. You have a naive f phase, mm. but you can't hold on to the resentment and stay in a low vibration mm. and want to kill them. But um, uh, like, you either find someone who can muscle test them, you find someone who's quite street savvy, or you'll you'll know spiritual people who are quite grounded and quite discerning who you're going to make friends with. Mm. So it's like, you, even though you love everyone. Every, any time there's a financial decision, you'll check it out with your best mate, John, in the church, you know. Like, uh, I'd like to say yes right now, but I have to speak to John before I give you an answer mm -hmm. to do the plumbing job at home. Um, with my own builder's situation, I found that I go to these groups, 12-step groups. I've met a lot of people there, who, and I've also got some, some people who give me spiritual guidance who are like uh, in the, you know, are property built, property in property and have contacts and have websites and have given me very sage advice uh, on things. So sometimes, I remember once, um, yeah, I'll, I'll share this story on camera. I think it was a really nice story. Um, so the builders knocked the neighbor's wall down without asking them. And then the, the, the neighbor was like furious mm -hmm. and, 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 and basically said like, either give me some money, I'm gonna make your life hell mm -hmm. with your money and then proceeded to do so. And I had no idea, because he was more savvy around buildings and stuff and how to, to make it. Over. So I sort of prayed my ass off. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I went to my cross step meeting. And I remember there was a guy there that was like a solicitor. I hadn't seen him for a long time. And I knew in my head, like, oh, I wish I had him as a, as a best mate. Mm -hmm. And I was praying my ass off. And I went to the meeting. I hadn't seen him for a year or two. And there he was sitting, sitting in the meeting, and I sat next to him. I said, "Hey, do you mind if I ask you a couple of questions?" And he just and he gave me the answers that I needed within like a minute or two. Mm. And you know, I didn't want to spend this, like three, four hundred quid on, on solicitor to give me advice and that, and I got it for free. And that was like, so it's like as you raise your level of consciousness, like an answer will come, or if it's a long-standing issue. Um, you know, uh, things will come. But as you, um, so, I don't know if that answers the question. Yeah. 